Hi, I'm Andrew and I'm making this video because there's a lot of tutorials showing you how to do general multicamming, which a lot of the time is just switching between two different video cameras, but typically using the same audio for both of them, uh, just so that you have something that's a little more dynamic instead of just having a static shot that's straight on. But for gaming videos, it's a little bit different because you do have the game and a lot is going on in the game, but you do have several different layers of audio. And those audios need to be treated in a way that you can both hear all the players talking at once, but the different sets of audio for each game to be playing individually at a time instead of all together. Now for this video, we're gonna assume that you have some knowledge of Premiere and that you've used it for a while. I won't be going over every single button or thing that I do, but I will bring up the things that I think are important and are unique to this kind of editing process. Okay, so now we're switched over to Premiere. And uh, this is where I'm going to show you just actual live editing of this. I'm using Adobe Premiere 2022. However, in my experience over the last several years of editing, this process hasn't changed and it doesn't look like Premiere Pro is going to change how they approach this. So multicam is going to stay pretty much the same. There might be some small differences. And if there is major ones, I'll make a new video to replace that. Now for this video, we're going to be using the workspace editing. Uh, just because I find it has the more useful tools. But typically when I do edit, I use two monitors. Uh, but just for the sake of this, having it a bit easier and all on one screen, we're just going to show you this way. I'm going to move things just because I hate how it looks. Now for this example, we're going to be using one of the edits that we did in Rainbow Six Siege, where we had three people playing. And we're just going to rename these just to make things a little easier. So first thing we want to do is we want to go here and create new sequence from clip for all of these ones. And then next we want to name these sequences gameplay. So we have mine, we have Alan, we have Callum's. For each of these, we have three different types of audio. We have our desktop, we have our mic audios, and then we have Discord. Now what we do is we make a new sequence and typically I just grab one of these, doesn't matter which one you grab, and go new sequence from clip. And I rename this one sync. So the first thing we're gonna be doing is making sure that all of these pieces of footage line up with one another, because that's gonna matter for multicam. So you grab one of these, chuck it in there, and chuck it in there. You'll notice that Callum's one is on V3 and A3, Alan is on V2 and A2, and I am on V1 and A1. That's pretty important to note because each of these will consider themselves as track. Whatever's one will be one track, two track will be this, and three track will be this. We'll get to why that's important. What you'll see here in these audio tracks are just the first layers of each of these reference files here. So this layer here, it actually won't show any of this. It'll just show the most active one. So that's what you see, but you can't sync up with that. So this is where we start getting a little bit creative with our process. I'm going to just make this a bit bigger so you can see it a little bit better. We push this up. Now you'll find that with most gaming videos, you can typically sometimes do a visual sync, whether you have a timer and match that up, but an audio sync is always the most consistent way because no matter what, you'll have audio that you need to sync up anyway. The more you do this, the more that'll make sense. So first thing we want to do with any of these gameplay ones is that we want to unlink all of them. So now we can select these as individual tracks. And for the first track, which we can see here in sync for Andrew, I usually just cut these, not delete, I cut, and then I go back to the sync and I paste them back in the line, like so. So this one is my mic track that I took and my Discord audio. And I usually make this a different color just so that we know what we're dealing with. Now I might move this up a bit more because this isn't important yet. And then you can do this a number of different ways. I usually just like to drag down. And because I have Cal and Alan's audio that are gonna go in here, or Alan and Cal's audio, I go here and I cut. And I'm going to bring that over to this screen again, 
oops, this screen and paste that here like so. Now I usually put this timeline on its own screen. It's on its own monitor because when you start dealing with multiple tracks, this fills up pretty quick. So you want some more visual to real estate in order to deal with this and not have to look so small. Now what we do next is we delete these Discord tracks from the other two. We only need one Discord audio, which I have taken from mine. Realistically, you can take from any one of these other two, but because I'm using mine as the one that everyone's gonna sync to, I've taken my Discord track. So we select everything next and we move it just a little bit up because we might have to move things back and forth. So right now we have my footage, Alan's footage, Cal's footage, my audio, Alan's audio, Cal's audio, and then my Discord, which has Alan and Callum on it. Now, the reason we have this one here is so that we can sync these other two tracks onto it. So first and foremost, we're trying to look for where Alan and Cal talk at the same time on this track and this track. And we can do that just by like isolating this. So we're gonna to try to sync up Callum first. Uh, yeah, I just started recording. Come on. I started recording. <laughs> no. Yeah, I just did then. So you can hear him saying that yeah. he just started recording? Yeah, I just started recording. No. And then he says no. it here as well. Yeah, I just did then. Nah, troll. Now you're trying to look, you can usually tell by the wavelengths where people start talking and such and compare it up. And what I like to do then is grab this, grab the beginning of that, of this little waveform here, and drag that to about the same area. So it kind of lines up. Now, if you find that it's like still echoing like this, yeah, yeah, I just, just started, started recording. recording. <laughs> no. no. Yeah, yeah, I just, just did, did them. Them. Okay. You'll find that you have that echo when the tracks aren't perfectly lined up. But if we were to mute this um, and just have it play with like all this, you might not notice that difference. But if you want to be really pedantic and line it up so that the audio does sound more natural, then you can actually go in here. Yep. Expand this a bit more. And then by holding Alt and then pressing your arrow keys while these are selected, you can move your track milliseconds at a time. Yeah, I've just started recording. <laughs> no. Yeah, I just did then. So what you heard then is it mostly matching up. You'll never get it quite perfect. But if you can get like that, mostly not to echo, but sound more of like either louder or a more tinny sound, that's what you want because then all you're doing is just matching this up to where my Discord lines up so that then our gameplay will also line up as well. So you move the gameplay footage and its audio as well as the audio track so that all of them line up. And then we do the same for Alan as well. So what I like to do as well is that once we have all of these sunk up, we can actually just do a cut here and then delete that so it's nice and clean. You don't have to do this. I do it because I like our clean it makes editing later and that'll make more sense as we go along we do that and we just clean everything back up we can mute this we don't need our discord track anymore so i like to go at the end as well and just clean up here as well so just get that clean that up and so that we have a nice block of synced up audio and visual tracks so now that we have all of our tracks we've cleaned up our end and we cleaned up our front as well so that everything is a nice block. We go over here to sync, which is this project here, and we create a new sequence. And then we call this one Multicam. Now in Multicam, you'll find that there is just one line here, one line there, and that represents all of the audio here and all of the video here. We don't want this to be changing because we want to be able to hear our voices at all times. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab all of these, cut, and then paste here. So we unhighlight this one so it doesn't paste over it. Okay, so essentially what we did here is that in sync, we made sure that all the gameplay footage and its audio were some separate files of, them, of their own. And in multicam is going to be referencing that footage. And this audio here is all lined up with the beginning of here, which is also the beginning of this. What we go next is we go here, we select multi-camera, and then we enable. Now, as you can see, 
it now brings up one footage. And if we press two, three, and one, we can actually switch between the different footages. And one being Andrew here, two being Alan, which is here on the 2v2 and a2, and Cal being on three, which is three here and three here. So now we have an easy reference to do that. But switching between this is good, but it's not perfect yet. What we want to do next is we go here, we go multi camera, and now we can see all three footage. Let me make this a bit smaller because this is now more important. Bring this back up here. So anytime you select one of these, it's your different footage. This side of the screen will display what is actually the focus. And this here will be showing you the different footages that can be selected from at the time because multicam is now enabled. And we've also gone into multicam editing mode, which allows us to see the different footages we want. If we jump between the timelines, we can see them happening concurrently. So now that we have our multicam set up, we can actually go through with the actual editing process. But before we do that, one of the things that you might want to do just to make this process a little bit easier is to name each of these scenes. Now you have to note that while you're in multicam mode, you can't actually add any text. So you want to go back to composite mode. This is going to be the basic mode that Adobe Premiere is in. And then you just add in some text. So for this one, because I know it's my footage, I'll call it Andrew. And then for this, well, too. So I'll just grab this. So this is just a name card. So if you want to do that and have people know that you're the footage that you're looking at, is your own. You can do that. And how I like to do this is go into here, go into my effects controls and create one for the first time and just do whatever style you like. So once you're happy with the nameplate that you like, you can just go like this, copy it and then paste it onto another one. You size it a little bit there and obviously change the name to the corresponding player. And then do that again for each footage you have. So now here in the multicam, if we go back into multicam mode, we can actually see everyone's name, Andrew, Alan, and Cal. And so when we actually switch between them, we can see clearly who we're actually on. There is an easy way of editing on the fly. Typically what I like to do is I like to look at the audios and see when who's talking and then switch to their camera at that stage. So Alan starts off here. So we're going to start off on two because he's on track two and we press space to go. Now they're just popping people out their ass because they can't think of anything new. <laughs> and then I'll press one this and press this. Pretty old. This game is and ancient. And then switch back to Alan it is and then Cal. Old. All right, what the fuck? Now, as soon as you press space bar, you'll actually notice that your footage has actually made these cuts. And what this is here is the different cuts you are changing to while you are going. So it's actually saved them there. One thing to note that if you do press undo, it'll undo whatever happened within that last play. So if you want to change something, press N and it'll bring out this tool that allows you to rescale things. So anything, it'll extend this and decrease this and move things back and forth and you can kind of touch them up however you want them. And so now it has a bit of a different timing, but it might seem a bit more seamless. This game <laughs> is pretty old. This game is ancient. It is yeah. pretty fucking old. And I like to use this tool when using this, just because it does edit a little bit better and moves between these timelines a little easier. Now, something to note in all of this as well is that when you do start editing on a multicam enabled track, you'll find that you can do physical cuts or the cuts from when you play, play and edit. Now, any track that you have selected and you press one, two or three will change. Even if you're over here 
it'll change this track. It'll always change the selected track. However, if you have no track selected, whatever this blue line is over, you will change. And then from here on out, this is just the creative process. You just press play and then you start editing to however you feel like and then start jumping to different tracks. This is now a creative process. Um, this is just the basics. I wanted to make this as short as possible so that you can get the information as quickly as possible. Obviously there are different programs. If you want me to do tutorials for them as well, I can learn the process, but between each one, they'll work fairly similar. The main benefit of this is that you don't have multiple layers or like name tags or people's ones and you have to move them into different layers and such and have different ones playing at different times and cut between them. But this is more of a simple approach of going one, two, three and changing between your ones. Note that while it only shows you four displays here, you can have much more and it'll actually adjust at whatever it is. But Adobe is smart enough to know that there's only three layers being actively with information on it. And so it'll only show three. If you have more, it'll show more. Thank you everybody for watching. And I hope this has been informative. If you like this video, put a like, consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time.